This is problem number 14 from the Halliday Resnick uh, textbook. And uh, it involves a combination series parallel system with capacitors. And it says that you have a battery voltage here of 10 volts, and all of the capacitors in the system uh, have a value of 10 microfarads. So the first part, it, there are two parts. Part A says, what's the charge on capacitor Q1? And we're going to basically just use a simple formula and plug some numbers into it, where the charge on a capacitor is a function of the capacitance, the ability to store charge, and the voltage across it. So that requires you to kind of answer this question, what's the voltage across capacitor C1? We can see from the loop that I've drawn in red that the voltage across capacitor C1 is going to be 10 volts. And so now I'm just going to plug in 10 microfarads for my capacitance and my 10 volts of potential difference across it, which is going to give us 1 times 10 to the minus fourth coulombs. So answering part A is pretty straightforward. You just need to recognize uh, A, which uh, formula to use, and B, being able to identify that there's a 10 volt uh, drop across capacitor plates. Part B wants to know what the what is the capacitant, uh, the charge across capacitor C2. And so uh, we can see that we would be you know, approach approach it in a similar way. For starters, we would say, um, and I've kind of written it incorrectly here, I would say voltage two times C2 is equal to Q2. So I can, I can answer the charge question by using the same formula. The problem is I don't know the voltage across capacitor C2, which I'll draw in green here on the right-hand loop. We need to know the voltage drop across that. In order to attack this problem, we're going to have to solve for equivalent capacitance. I'm going to start by finding the equivalent capacitance of everything I've drawn in here in the green cloud. So I'm going to say that 1 uh, over CEQ, the equivalent capacitance, is going to be equal to 1 over C2 plus 1 over C when I'm dealing with these two capacitors in series. So I'm only finding those for right now. Uh, in, in blue, and then I'm going to add it to the 10 microfarads uh, on this capacitor. I kind of wish that they were they were all labeled. So I'm going to call that C3, I'm going to call this one C4, I'm going to call this one C5. So now I'm ready to do this. It's going to be 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over 10 microfarads plus 1 over 10 microfarads. And when I do that, I'm going to get um, 2 over 10 microfarads F is equal to 1 over CEQ. So now I get 2 times CEQ, or the equivalent capacitance, is equal to 10 microfarads if I cross multiply. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I get CEQ is equal to 5 microfarads. We can see that the equivalent capacitance has gone down uh, for capacitors in series, and it's gone down by half if they are the same. So now I can say, well, that's just for the, the blue box. And so now I'm going to add that to C4 because C4 is in, um, is in parallel with uh, the equivalent capacitance that I just found in the blue box. So now I can say that everything inside the green cloud is C4 plus that equivalent capacitance. Uh, that's going to give me 5 uh, microfarads plus 10 microfarads, I'll kind of plug these in in the wrong place, but the end result is the same, 15 microfarads. So now I know everything inside the green uh, cloud is 15 microfarads of capacitance, and I need to add it now to C5, but again, and I'll do this in uh, purple, everything inside the purple cloud is going to have an equivalent capacitance. So when I do it, Again, um, I would get 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over uh, the green cloud, which is 15 microfarads, plus 1 over 10 microfarads. That's the series capacitor, C5. Uh, I'm going to have to find a least common denominator and go from there. So my least common denominator, uh, I'm going to choose uh, 30, would be 2 over... 30 microfarads plus 3 over 30 microfarads, which will give me uh, 5 over 30 microfarads. I'm going to cross multiply with 1 over CEQ, uh, and I get the equivalent capacitance 
uh, for everything in the purple cloud on the right hand side of that parallel circuit is equal to six microfarads. And so now what I'm going to say is that the total charge, I'm going to go back to my formula, Q is equal to CV. So now I'm going to say that the total charge on the right hand side is going to be equal to the equivalent capacitance that I just found, six microfarads times uh, 10 volts, which is the voltage drop across that equivalent capacitor on the right hand side. Uh, when I do that, of course, I get 60 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, and I could adjust, uh, you know, my description in scientific notation if I wanted to, 6 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, coulombs. Here's where the uh, question gets a little bit more interesting. So now I've got the equivalent capacitance on the right-hand side as if uh, C2, 3, C3, C4, and C5 were all just one capacitor. It would have uh, an equivalent capacitance of six microfarads. But now what I can say is that that charge, um, 60 times 10 to the minus six coulombs, is uh, shared. Uh, let me kind of redraw this. So here's C5, and uh, this is the equivalent capacitance that I found um, as part of the steps kind of getting there. So what we're saying then is that this number, uh, 60 times 10 to the minus 6, is both here. This, that, that charge is stored here and here. That's a kind of a characteristic of capacitors in series. So, you know, if this is the positive terminal or the cathode and that's the negative terminal in the anode, I'd get plus Q here, minus Q here, plus Q here, and minus Q. Notice that they're all just Q. So now I can say I know the charge on C5. So I'm just going to look only at C5 right now. I can say that charge Q is equal to C times V. Charge is known. It's 60 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The capacitance it's no, is known. It's 10 times 10 to the minus 6 Farads, and so the voltage drop is the only thing I don't know. We can see now that it is six volts is equal to the voltage drop across capacitor number five. So if that's six volts there, oops, that's a V. If that's six volts, then the voltage drop across C4 must be four volts. I'm using the loop law. So if I go up through that upper loop and go through C4 and C5, I have to have a total of 10 volts dropped. So I can say that four volts is dropped across C4. As I take a look now at uh, C2 and C3, I can see that the sum of their voltages has to equal to 4 volts. They're in parallel with capacitor 4. So therefore, the voltage drop across capacitor number 2 must be 2 volts. And so my final step then will be to say that Q2 is equal to C2 times V2. And I can just solve for Q2 by multiplying the capacitance uh, which is 10 microfarads times 2 volts. And so therefore the charge becomes 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And that's my answer for the charge on uh, capacitor 2, uh, which is part B to this question. Wait a second, check that. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20. So I moved the decimal place uh, to the wrong place. It's 20 times 10 to the minus 6. So my correct answer would be 2 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs, my mistake.